has the need of a miracle in this oh, place. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, the important thing to always to understand or to realize is God's normal operation procedure is miracles. Amen? Amen. Yes. Look, he does things supernaturally. And so, I mean, to us, we call it a miracle. But to God, it's standard operation. It's standard procedure. Amen? It's normal to him. And you know, there's a place you can get to where the supernatural can become your natural. Amen? Isn't that right? The supernatural Amen. should become your natural. It should be the every day. You walk in miracles. And so, this morning, I'm going to talk to you about the pathway to miracles. The pathway to miracles. Amen? Amen. That you would walk in miracles and see miracles, but there are some things on your part. You know, we all, and I, I'll say this, I'll, I'll, I'll say this as well, is that faith is the vehicle. Faith is the vehicle. If you're going to go on a road trip and you have a map, you're going to need it. You're going to need faith. Faith is a vehicle to travel along the pathway of miracles. Amen. To see miracles. Hallelujah. So always remember in me it's faith. Your faith would continue to grow. But the fact of the matter is your faith determines what you see. Amen. Amen. Faith determines what you see. Faith is not determined or based on what you see. Hallelujah. But faith will bring into existence what you believe even if you don't see it. But you will see it as long as you have faith. Amen? I mean, that's phenomenal just to think. It doesn't even have to exist. Do you know that God even says himself? If it doesn't exist, I will make it for you. But the only way that's going to happen is by faith. So always, you know, even in the pathway to miracles, I mean, we're going to look at some key, some key things regarding that. But remember, faith is always, faith is an operation or should be an operation in our lives on a daily basis. No matter what. Yes. You know, that's the thing is, even, you know, a lot of people, and I even hear, you know, preachers and pastors and others that would, evangelists that would preach on great miracles that they've seen. And people would think, well, but you're a pastor or you're an evangelist. You know, that's 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 the business you're in. No, every believer is in that business. That's not Amen? True. It's not just for some elite group or some group of evangelists or apostles or prophets or teachers or pastors. It's for every single believer. Amen? That's right. Mark 16, and these signs shall follow who? Them that believe. Amen? The believer. Yes. And so as you believe, they signs, they being miracles, they being wonders, yes. will follow you. You don't follow them, they follow you. So don't ever discount yourself or think that because you're not a preacher, that you're not in full-time ministry, that you can't experience miracles on a daily basis or see miracles on a daily basis. It is a myth that you would think that you cannot That's right. experience it because you're just a member of the church. Or you're just, well, a member of the church is a born-again child of God. And everything that God's Word says, every promise that He says, it belongs to you. And yes. you can see it and you can walk in it. Amen? Amen. So never disqualify yourself or, or, or discredit yourself that you can't have miracles. Amen? Amen. Because, you know, and that's, that's one thing, you know, a lot of times you hear it, it's almost one-sided. It almost seems like, well, that works for the evangelist or that works for the apostle or whatever it may be. But how is that going to work in my life? And today you're going to see. Amen? The pathway of miracles. And there are some things that you'll be able to do so that what? So that you can experience miracles in your life. Amen? Amen. Who wants that? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's awesome. So number one. Number one in the pathway to miracles is your attitude. Woo, this is a big one. I mean, this. <laughs> but it, your attitude. Amen? 
Philippians 2 and verse 5 says, you must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Isn't that something? That you would have the same attitude. Well, you know, you've heard me say it many a time. So the world thinks we've lost our mind. And the world is absolutely correct. They, we have lost our mind. We don't have our mind. We have the mind of Christ. Amen? Well, in that, you should have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. Amen? Did he have a bad attitude about anything? I mean, he's the Lamb of God headed to the slaughterhouse. Do you understand? But he never had a bad attitude. Hello. He knew. Why? Because he knew who he was. He knew his purpose. Woo. I mean, that right there. I mean, because even if you look, people, the moment there's persecution, oh my goodness, I must be in the wrong job. No, that means you're doing something right. Amen? Yes. Look, if you, if you go through life and never come under attack, you might question if you're doing something right. But it's when that you're under attack, when there is persecution coming against your life. Look, I guarantee you there's persecution in people's lives. Hear this warning. Right as we speak. Because even maybe you had plans to do something, but those plans changed because of something. Hello, because of even persecution that would stop you. You had plans to do something, but persecution came. Something came against you that stopped you. You see, the devil wants to stop you in, the, in your tracks. But regardless, your attitude has to be right. Yes. Imagine if Jesus has had a bad attitude. Look, I'm the Son of God. I don't need this anymore. Call in the angels. Send them in. Boom. And the earth ultimately be wiped out. If he would have had a bad attitude, but he had a good attitude. Amen? Amen. Why? Because he was love. Yes. Come on, that's where you, that's where love comes in. That you would love because you could get cynical, you can get offended, you can get hurt, you can get disappointed, you can get bitter. There's all those things that can come into your heart if you don't guard your heart. Amen? But as you guard your heart and walk in love, then you won't allow any of that to come into your life. To take you out. Because what? You're going to form a bad attitude if you allow things to come in. Even thoughts. Even thoughts. As thoughts would come in. Right? Yes. You could, I mean, you could think about some things and the next thing you know. I mean, you're, you're basically now acting out those thoughts because you allow them to come in and then you get a bad attitude. And that's what a lot of people, the world's out to get me. This and such didn't happen because of this person. Who cares? Amen? Just keep loving people. Yes. Don't get a bad attitude. Because Jesus was love. He was the very love of God. Amen? And He is love. God is love. Amen? Yes. Jesus is God. The Father is God. The Holy Spirit is God. So, don't get a bad attitude. Ephesians 4 17 through 31. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read it all, but I'm giving you the scripture reference. Go read it on your devotional time. Ephesians 4, 17 through 31 talks about living as children of light. Living as children of light. It tells us to put off the old. Well, what's the old? Bitterness? Let me let me list some things for you. Let me list that it talks about. In Ephesians 4, bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, and all types of evil behavior. Isn't that something, you know, the old, put off the old. Amen? You're yeah. born again. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Well, with that should come an attitude change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I mean, if you even knew some of the stuff that... You say, well, Pastor, everything is great in here. You're always happy. Well, you know why? I've just developed my spirit enough to have a good attitude. Amen? I mean, if you only knew what was coming at us right now. I mean, my goodness. Or, you know, you wouldn't even know. We would get up to preach sometimes. I would get up and preach in a service. And, I mean, all hell literally was breaking loose. I mean, chaos. But you can walk in perfect peace of God and have a good attitude. Amen? Hallelujah. 
Why? Because you put off the old and you put on the new. Amen? You walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 23 says, instead, so here it is. It says, what? Put off the old, all these things, and it says in verse 23, instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. Wow, that is powerful. To renew your thoughts and your attitude. Amen? You can have an outlook. You know, I remember, <laughs> you know, there's family, there's some family members that just, they've had these attitude quirks, these attitude problems, where they would think that the world was against them. I mean, <laughs> they just think everyone is out to get them. Everybody is out to take for them. Well, you know what? That's because they had the wrong perspective in life, because they had an attitude problem. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Who can relate with that? You've got some family members that everybody's out to get them. Everybody's out to hurt them. Everything's always, you know, they look at the negative in things rather than having the right perspective. You see, negative will be a result when you think about negative and then ultimately act negative, negatively. You act in a wrong way will be because of the attitude. You're either going to have a good attitude or a bad attitude. Because ultimately the outcome of your life, amen, the outcome of situations has to deal with your attitude. Because whatever, really, whatever the outcome is, if your attitude is right, then how is there a problem? Amen? How is there an issue in your life? So the outcomes, but the reality of that is, this is the reality. The outcomes in life have to do with your attitude. So really the outcome is going to be based on your attitude. Amen? And that's where a lot of people, it's that point where the enemy limits them because of their attitude. That's why it's like, I mean, imagine God wants to do something great, but because of their attitude, no matter if God's moving or not. Amen. Because you know what? God is moving. He is. And if you have a bad attitude, guess what? You'll, you won't see him move. You'll miss it. You'll be, whew. It's like somebody standing, you know, one of the places we loved going when we were kids. And I have to tell you the story about Pastor Gloria there, but we grew up going to Gardner State Park on the Frio River up in Lakey, Texas. I mean, crystal clear, you go to it. You know, we just love it. I don't know why I feel the anointing when I'm talking about that. But anyway, yeah, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's life experience. It's life, you know, I mean, obviously great memory. But you know, the amazing thing is, there are many people, as we were tubing, they stand on the banks. They never get in the river. And it's like everybody, everything just passed. The fun, the joy, the good times, the memories pass them by. You know, and that's how a lot of people are, even in the body of Christ. Yes. Is that everyone else is having a great time, having a great life. And people even are saying, well, why them? Why are they getting the Lord? I've been believing you. Look at the sacrifice. Look at what I did. Look at this, that, the other. But it's because of their attitude they miss. It's just like all those inner tubers that just pass them by. Amen? Probably one of the best, well, we, there's a lot of stories from up there because, I mean, and you can, you can learn a lot. But one of the best, you know, uh, Lakey, that county up there was a dry county. But there was a lot of inner tubers and they would go fill up their ice chest with beer. And because they're partying, you know, a lot of them college students partying. One of the best ones I remember seeing it. I laughed so hard. I mean, we all did. But they're trying to get their, their ice chest into the inner tube. And they dump it. And all of their beer heads down the river. I mean, they're trying to get it and grab it. It's gone. So it was one of the best things they ever saw. So you see a bunch of college students without beer, you know. But you know what? Don't allow the things of God to pass you by. Amen. Allow the things that are not of God, you know, bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, all these things that we talked about, rage. I mean, there's all these things. Mm -hmm. Let them pass you by just like them beer cans did. Just dump them in the river. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let them and just laugh and laugh at yourself. Amen. Amen. Like I say, you need to learn to, to laugh and even laugh at yourself. Yes. If you have a problem with that, if you can't laugh at yourself, just give me a phone call. Amen. 
And I'll laugh at you for you. Amen? <laughs> I'm having fun with you this morning. But but I am serious because allow those other things. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Just not to affect your life and affect your attitude. Your attitude is not only your outlook on life, but has to do with what you get out of life. Did you get that? Let me read that one more time. Your attitude is not only your outlook on life, but has to do with what you get out of life. Amen? You know, life is full of so many things. But based on your attitude is what you're going to get out of it. Amen? Look, do you remember the bad things, the hurts, the pains? Or do you remember the good things? That's why when somebody dies and goes to be with the Lord. Amen? Because that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. To be out of body is to be present with the Lord. And obviously you've got to be born again. You've got to call upon the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. But the thing about it is <clears throat> your attitude has a lot to do. Even, you know, you have somebody who's gone on to be with Jesus. Yes. And what? Some people have like, I mean, they go through mourning and go through. Mourning is a natural process. You need to do that. But what I'm trying to say is. There, you can see the difference between people. You, you just were telling the story about how they're going and having, can you imagine, a funeral service at a bar? Mm -hmm. Well, it has something to do with their attitude. Yes. Amen? Yes. Look, I'm not speaking against people, not a single person, but, you know, it should be a celebration service, so. Yes. Amen? I mean, you're not just, you know, have you seen people where they're just, they, it's like, my goodness, I mean, you, you know, you want to die after you go to the, the service. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be like that. You're going to celebrate the person's life. Amen? Yes. So you should celebrate the same way in your life. Amen? Amen. Do you, you get what I'm saying? But it has to do with people's attitude. That's it. Amen? That's it. And that has a lot to do with religion and, and things like that. Amen? Yes. But, I mean, we've seen some things in, in family... Where, I mean, anyway, you know, I mean, nuts. But it's, it's because of attitude. Amen? But it has a lot to do with perspective because your heart attitude is going to reveal some things about you. Yes. So, what does that mean? What you get out of life has to do with your attitude. Because life, look, life is unfair. Who, who is, who is, Come to recognize life is unfair. That's right. Amen? But even in an unfair world, you can have joy. You can have peace. You can celebrate. You can live the life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. And it's going to be in relation to your attitude. If, if blind Bartimaeus, who knows about blind Bartimaeus? Yes. Jesus! Son of David. I mean, he cried out. Amen? But if blind Bartimaeus had the attitude that no one would help him, that Jesus wouldn't heal him, everybody is against him, then he would have never got his miracle. And the fact is, people were against him. Hey, shut up. You're making too much noise. Be quiet. What did it say? said he cried even the louder. Amen? Yes. You see, his attitude was right. And, your, and his attitude had a lot to do with him getting his miracle. Isn't that right? Yes. His attitude had a lot to do with it because he could have said, everybody is against me. If Jesus wants to heal me, he'll heal me. You know, that's a lot of people in the church today. Amen? I'm not saying here at the river, praise God for that. Amen? Yes. We see miracles. We see the supernatural. We see signs and wonders. Hallelujah. But people are even in, across America sitting in churches <laughs> needing a miracle. But they have an attitude. Well, if God wants to touch me, he'll touch me. If God wants to heal me, well, he'll, he'll just have to do it whenever. And it's on his timing. Well, you know, come on. That's not, that's, that's not the right attitude. You should have the attitude of I'm getting healed today. Amen. Today is my miracle. Today, hallelujah, I'm going to walk in freedom. I've been dealing with, you know, people dealing with depression. Mm -hmm. People are dealing, even as you watch it, there are people mm -hmm. dealing with depression. 
And you say, well, maybe one day. Today is the day that you can be set free of depression and every bondage, even addicted to something. It could be alcohol or cigarettes, whatever it may be. It may be drugs. It may be opioids. It may be whatever it is that you would be set free today. Don't allow your attitude to get in the way of your miracles. Right. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why blind Bartimaeus, he didn't cry about it. He cried to Jesus. Amen? He cried out to Jesus. Hallelujah. Having a bad attitude, having a wrong attitude limits God's ability to help you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. Having a bad attitude, having a wrong attitude limits God's ability to help you. Attitude can limit what God can or cannot do in your life. So having a bad attitude can limit God. That's why it's important. Have a good attitude. You know, that's why many people will blame God. Many people get mad at God. It's not God's fault. God, first of all, he, he's not a man that he would lie. So he does not lie. Another thing is, God only does good. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. And God never makes any mistakes. And so you're not a mistake. Amen? Right. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't allow the things in life that don't go always right. Those things that go wrong sometimes. Allow them to sharpen and change you and build you yes. and grow you, not to destroy you. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. Psalm 51.10 says... Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Another translation says right attitude. To renew a right attitude in me. Amen? So if you recognize even this morning, you say, you know what, I've got a bad attitude about some things. I've been, become cynical about some things. That you would say, Lord, touch me today. I'm not going to have a bad attitude. I want to have a heavenly perspective, not a bad attitude perspective. Amen? Amen. Psalm 51, 12 in the King James goes on to say, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Another translation says it, let a willing attitude control me. Oh, my, my, my. Let a willing attitude, because actually your attitude can void or block what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you have to have a willing attitude, a willing. Lord, I'll do whatever, whatever you want me to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? A willing attitude control you. Hallelujah. Your attitude has some control over your destiny. Your attitude has some control over your destiny. That's why many people don't. That's why, look, people say, well, I'll never be able to get that promotion because they have a bad attitude that's that limits right. them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen? Amen. That's why people say, well, I can never do that. I can never get that job. You're right. You can never do it because of your attitude. But if you say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You see, that's the right attitude. That's an attitude that says, Lord, I'm willing to do it. Take control. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Man, that's good stuff. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching you this yes. morning. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. The Israelites that did not make it into the promised land due to their big part had to do with, in big part, to do with their attitude. Yes. They were always what? Complaining, murmuring, yes. always looking back to Egypt, which Egypt is the world. Amen? Yes. It represents the world. They're always... That's why, can you imagine? Here it is. Moses is up on the mount. With God, in God's presence, said, wait here. They don't come back. I mean, he doesn't come back. So what do they do? They turn back to the world. And what do they do? They build a golden calf. They build an, oh, an idol. Can you imagine? You see, they immediately went back to the old yes. because of their attitude. Yes. They allowed an idol to be raised in their life. They built an idol in their life because of their attitude. Yes. And so that's what happens is, don't allow the, you know what I'm saying, when it even becomes unfamiliar or there's that wait time, don't allow things to be built, idols to be built in your life that would keep you from moving into the things of God. Amen? Amen. Man, that's a good word this morning. You grab a hold yes. of that one. Yes. My goodness. Why? Because, remember, here we're talking about the Israelites. They complained. They murmured. 
They were negative. Their heart attitude towards God blocked them from receiving their inheritance. Oh my goodness. Never allow your bad attitude to block you from the inheritance of God. Amen. It, it blocked. They literally never received their inheritance. Why? Because of bad, negative attitude. Right attitude equals perfect will of God for your life. Write that down. Right attitude equals the perfect will of God for your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 2 in the Amplified says, Do not be conformed to this world or this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. Woo, did you get that? Fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. But be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. I love the way the Amplified says that. Because it's not just the renewing of your mind, it's the what? It's the entire renewal of your mind. By its new ideals and its new attitude. There's attitude again. You think God's trying to tell us something, amen? So that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight of you. Amen? Hallelujah. Everyone here say me. me. So I'm going to say this after me. Say, I, I will have a good attitude. Have a good attitude. And, that attitude and that attitude will cause me, will cause me. to to walk in, to walk in, and experience, and experience my inheritance. My, my inheritance. Amen. Because yes. you got to walk in it. You got to know. You will yes. experience it. Yes. Amen. Yes. So having a thankful and grateful attitude is part. Luke eleven. Or sorry, Luke seventeen eleven through nineteen. I'm not going to read it all, but in verse ten. Well, I think it starts in verse eleven actually. That's Luke 7, in Luke 17, verse 11 through 19, it talks about 10 lepers. Amen? Uh -huh. Only one came back. And what was the difference with that one? He had a good attitude. That's right. But what was a good attitude? Specifically, <coughs> he was thankful. He was grateful. <coughs> Amen? Yes. Be thankful. Have a thankful and a grateful attitude in your life. Because he was the one that got made whole. Amen? Look, the other ones were, were healed, but he was the one that got a miracle of being made whole. You see, the pathway to his miracle. Look, they were on the pathway of miracles, but it was only him that was made whole. That means if his nose was missing or a limb or a digit, one of his fingers were missing, you know, the other, remember, there was 10. They all came. They got healed. Let me say it this way. It's the way the Bible describes it. They got cleansed. Amen? Yes. But the one that came back that had the thankful and grateful attitude was the one who was made whole. That means if he was missing a finger, it was restored. Amen? Yes. The others walked away. Whatever appendage was missing, whatever skin was deteriorated, they were cleansed, but they still had some physical problems. You see what I'm saying? Amen? But he was made completely whole. Why? Because of his thankful attitude. Yes. Amen? Isn't that powerful? Attitude, write this down if you want. Attitude will determine your altitude. Attitude will determine your altitude. How high you can go. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So we all need to do good in, I mean really, in, in having a good attitude. Because if you have a bad attitude, it will actually deflect people. Amen? I mean, I just feel to say that. It will, it will do. Not that you want everybody in your life. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't mean that you have a bad attitude <laughs> to get rid of people. Amen? But that you would have a good attitude. Don't, you know, as you have a good attitude, you'll, you'll attract people. Number two, expectation. Amen? On the pathway to miracles is expectation. Hallelujah. Go with me to Psalm 27. Well, I'm going to actually read it in the Amplified. Let me pull that up. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Just have my King James here. 
Psalm 27. Let's read 13 and, and 14. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. Hallelujah. Starting in verse, th verse 13, it says, what, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Wait and hope for it and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Amen? Yes. The word wait is translated to expect. That's why I read it out of the Amplified. So wait, that word is translated, it means to expect. Mm -hmm. In the King James, that word wait in the King James means to expect. David believed and expected that he would see the Lord's goodness extended to him here on earth. He believed it. He had a good attitude about it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That he would see the goodness of God here on earth yes. in the land of the living. Amen? Yes. You get what you expect to get. If See, if he didn't expect it, he wouldn't have seen it. But what he expected, that's what he got. David expected God to answer his prayers. David expected to receive God's promises. Amen? Come on, who's, who's expecting to, to that God hears your prayers? Who expects it that you would receive an answer? Amen? Amen. Who's expecting to walk in the blessings of God? Yes. Hallelujah. David expected to see the goodness of the Lord here on earth in the land of the living. You know, that, that has a lot to do with it because people don't expect it. You know, how many times have you heard people say, well, because of whatever, my, my mistakes in the past, my this, that, the other. I can't do that. I can't believe that. You know, what is it? It's because they have no expectation of it. Mm -hmm. And so always have an expectation. It has nothing to do with your past. Right. Your present, and a matter of fact, your present time and your future has nothing to do with your past. Why? Because if you put the past under the blood, amen? Yes. Come on, if you if you made mistakes yes. and you asked God for forgiveness, amen, yes. then those mistakes are no more. They, they're, they're, they are a thing of the past. Yes. Amen? Amen. Come on, it has nothing to do with your present, nor does it have anything to do with your future. Amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So don't allow the thing... Have an expectation. Because if you ask God to forgive you, guess what? Then expect that he forgave you. Yes. Amen? Amen? And it doesn't disqualify you or stop you or exempt you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're not exempt. Or Roberts used to say, or Roberts, great man of God, used to have the saying. He used to say, miracles are coming our way every day. You either attract them or they pass you by. And what causes you to attract them is expectancy. Or Roberts, amen, it's your expectancy. Are you believing for miracles? Then you should be expecting miracles, amen? Are you, ex are you believing to prosper? Then you better expect prosperity. Yes. Are you believing for healing? Then you better expect yes. healing, amen? Yes. Hallelujah, yes. whatever it is, that there would be an expectation. Otherwise, it'll just pass you by. Expect expectancy, just like Oral Roberts was speaking of. Expectancy attracts it. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Jesus said it this way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. That's good, isn't it? Yes. Matthew 8, 13, by the way. Can you, can you see, see how even the Word of God lays it out for us? As thou hast believed, really how you expect it, it, that's how. Look, it's not necessarily going to come the way that you expect it. See, and that's where I think expectation people get it wrong. That's they expect right. it to happen one way. Exactly. No, it doesn't matter how it's going to happen. You just expect it's going to happen. Amen? You see, there's a difference. That's where sometimes people... Well, they get, they get it wrong because they expected things that went go their way. They expected, just like Naaman, the left, Naaman the leper. He expected all these things to happen. None of them happened. 
Amen? None of them happened. But you see, when it was finally his young servant that actually spoke some sense into him, says, what do you have to lose? That he went and he dipped. And he dipped the seven times. Amen? Yes. That he expected. You're not going to go dip if you don't. See, something changed. It was something that changed in him. That he went from his own expectancy of how he expected it to what the Lord wanted to do. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. The world calls it the law of attractions. The Bible calls it expectation or expectancy. You see, the world, you know, it's a law of attraction. That if you think about it, you attract. You know, that's a bunch of hogwash. Do it the Bible. If you want Bible results, then do it the Bible way. Amen? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So it's, it's expectation. I mean, we just read how many scriptures about it. Amen? Yes. Psalm 62 5 says, Psalm 62 5 says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. Oh, my, my, my. You see how much expectation has to deal with receiving your miracle? As, you've, as your life is on the pathway of miracles. Amen? It's just your expectancy is going to, going to bring those into existence. Amen? I mean, but remember, faith is always mixed with this. Don't ever remove faith. Well, if I have a good attitude, no. If I have, no, if them all working together, amen? That's right. If you have to have all the ingredients, amen, to, to receive. You can't just be, you have to have every ingredient. You can't just, I mean, my goodness, that would be like, I mean, I'm just trying to think of, you know, I mean, because obviously we've heard a lot of examples on baking a cake or making bread or whatever, but whatever it is, if it doesn't have all the ingredients, something's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's not going to taste too good. That's right. I mean, my wife makes the best thrift sledges. I mean, it's over the top. Over the top. But if she left out the milk, guess what? The three different the three different main ingredients, guess what? It would be a dud. It would just be a regular old okay. cake. It would maybe not be a dud, but it would just be a regular old okay. cake. Right. But it's when you add the rest into it. Oh, my, my, my. My mouth is starting to water, babe. I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. But that's how you should be. You should have an expectancy in your life. Amen? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everything I expect, everything I desire, everything I hope for comes from God and comes from the Word. Yes. Amen? amen? And you should expect it that way. That's why people are expecting from somebody else. If you're expecting somebody else to do something for you or what you are expecting the wrong from the wrong person. Amen? Come on, now you know that you expect it's from God. God and His Word are one and the same. The Word creates expectancy. The more we read the Word, the more expectancy grows. Isn't that powerful? So the more that you read the Word of God, the more that expectancy grows in your heart. If you want your expectancy to go to a new level, then it will through the word. Sounds going to come. Expectancy. Because you got to do as you read it. Mm -hmm. Look, how many of you have read something in the word of God and it was just like it just became real in your heart? Yes. You're like, hold on. It says that? I want that. Amen? And that's where many people, even there, where the hunger and the thirst comes into play because people will say, hold on. I want what they, I want that. I, whatever it is, I can have that. If I read the word and have an expectancy in my heart. Amen? Yes. Like you would like read it and it would just become alive in your heart. And you say, Lord, I expect to get it because your word says it. Amen? Yes. You see how expectancy will grow in your heart? Hallelujah. As you read the word of God. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. The more you see and hear in the word of God about the blessings, the more you expect to walk in the blessings. Oh, yes. You see how the more that it talks about strength or prosperity or healing or whatever it may talk about, the more that you're going to start expecting it. Amen. That's why people don't expect it because they don't get the word of God on it. Amen. 
Amen. That's why if you want to see expectancy grow in your heart, get the, get the Word of God on it, on whatever subject yes. it is. And then you'll start to expect those things in your yes. life. Amen? Amen? The more you see and hear in the Word of God about health, prosperity, healings, the power, miracles, the more you expect to walk in those things. Amen? Bottom line, health, prosperity. You expect, I'm going to walk in that. Lord, your word says it. Amen? Amen. I'm going to walk in I'm going to experience it in my life. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Whatever it is. Healing, power, whatever it is. Every need that. Guess what? It's going to be based on what the word of God. And then you're going to expect it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day, we should be expecting all of his benefits. I yes. love that scripture. I use that a lot. Yes. Amen. Don't I, sweetheart? Right? Forget not all his benefits. Yes. Amen? And that's what happens is people don't hear, they don't listen, they don't read the word of God. Amen? So guess what? They don't, they don't expect all the benefits. They don't receive all the benefits. Amen? But they're all yours. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Psalm 103.2. You should remember that. Amen? Forget not all his. All. 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 They're all for you. Amen? And you should expect to receive them all. Amen? Yes. People forget when they stop expecting. People forget when they stop expecting. That's what happens is. If you stop expecting, you're going to forget about it. But that's why you're always going to continue to expect from God. A lot of people have an attitude of, well, that doesn't happen to me like it happens to others. Well, what are you expecting? Amen? And it has to do with them expecting the worst. I mean, how many people like that? They always expect the worst. Well, guess what? That's what they'll get because that was their expectation. Amen? You see how it works? Are some things coming to light this morning for you? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hmm. They expect to lose their job. They expect to get sick. They expect the world's worst rather than expecting God's best. Amen? Amen. Amen. So they expect the, what, the worst thing that can happen, the worst outcome that can happen. Why? Because... They stopped expecting God's best for their life. God wants you to walk in the best. Amen? And I tell you what, if it from God, it's going to be the best. Amen? And if God said it, it will be the best. We should expect from God every day. Well, what should you expect? You should expect the blessings, the health, the strength, the favor. Amen? I mean, name them. Just name, I'm just naming a, naming a few. Amen? But the word of God is full. This is not wishful thinking. And I'll just make this clear. This is not wishful thinking. Amen? This is not just power of positive thinking. You know, that's new age, by the way. That's new age. They just think, you know, they think a certain way. They think that they, they think, let me, let me be clear. They think if they think a certain way, if they meditate on it, if they, you know what I mean, that it was going to attract, like the, the laws of attraction. It's new age garbage. It's a bunch of nonsense. Because none of it's based on the word of God. Therefore, it's void. It's null and void. Amen? Therefore, it doesn't work. It's just religious mumbo jumbo. Amen? This is the word of God creating an image. That's what I'm talking about. This is not wishful thinking. This is not making a wish. This is not the power of positive thinking. This is the word of God creating an image in your heart, in my heart. Of what God says and what is what He says belongs to me. And right along with that image comes the expectancy of it coming to pass. Amen. Remember, Abraham, old, oh, gonna have a child, gonna be a father of many nations. That's what his name literally means. Guess what? With that came expectancy. There was an image planted, amen, in his heart. There was the he saw it spiritually. You understand what that means? He saw it spiritually and he expected to see it happen, to come into fruition, to manifest. And guess what happened there? It's what happened. Amen? So David said it this way. If I had not expected to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, where would I be? That's Psalm 27, 13. Amen? You see, listen to David, the psalmist. Amen? Yes. King David, he said, 
if I had not expected to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, where would I be? Where would we be today if we don't expect to see the, the goodness of God in our lives? Amen? Why, where would we be if we don't expect to see great things happen in our lives? Where would we be? Amen? I mean, my goodness, you would be falling apart. That's why many people are wrecked. Why? That's why many people, their life is a hot mess. Have you ever heard that statement? Yes. It's a hot mess. How many do you know people, their life is a hot mess. It's full of chaos. Yes. Why? Because that's probably what they expect. The worst. That's it. But you can expect the best. Amen. Amen. You can expect to see the goodness of God in your life. Come on. In the Amen. land of the living, that's here on earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The word hope. Looking at that word, the word hope is translated intense expectation. Ooh, that'll take you. Come on, think about hope. Like when you hope, well, it's not just it's just not just a word. I just, I hope everything goes good. No, it's intense expectation. Yes. Amen. Intense. Hallelujah. Yes. So, come on, we're going to start believing God and expecting to see what we're believing Him for. Amen. Look what Paul said while sitting in prison as he wrote to the church at Philippi. Philippians 1, 19 through 20. says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Verse 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope. Isn't that awesome? According to to my earnest expectation and my hope. So Paul here, Paul, <laughs> Paul wasn't, well, I mean, think of it this way. This is not Paul at all, but it was, he wasn't, well, so Paul wasn't, well, I sure hope so. I wish this could change. Is that what it says? This wasn't based on wishful thinking. He said, I know I'm coming out of this prison. I know this situation is going to turn around. And the reason I am so positive about it is because of my earnest expectation. That's what he was saying. Yes. Amen. Yes. I wish things would change. I, I hope because I'm hoping things will change. Hello. No, it's because of your earnest expectation. It will change. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. My, my, my. Hallelujah. Number three. So number one, attitude. Number two, expectation. Number three, action. Amen? Mm -hmm. And this is where more so your faith comes in because it's action of faith. Amen? Yes. Don't sit there and do nothing. Act. Amen? Faith is believing in action. Let me say that again. Faith is believing in action. Matthew 9, 2, and Jesus seeing their faith. How was Jesus able to see their faith? Through their actions. Amen? So faith is believing in action. How did actually Jesus see their faith? He saw it through their actions. Amen? That's why when Jesus, you see miracles performed. I mean, people, it was through their through the actions. Amen? Hallelujah. Luke 5, 18 through 26, read it on your devotional. I'm going to read verse 20. It says, and when he, being Jesus, saw their faith, how, how did he see it? They couldn't get in. They went on a housetop. They tore up the roof. They lowered them in. Amen? Talking about the man that was paraplegic. They went there. The power of God was there to heal people. Nobody was getting healed. Here comes this person, four friends, can't get in, tear up the roof. But how did Jesus see it? Why? Their actions. Amen? Amen. Faith doesn't get idle. Otherwise, otherwise it's not faith. That's right. Faith is not idle. Amen? That's otherwise, right. it's not faith. Faith is an action. Amen? Or, or should I say it this way? Faith is an act. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So remember, you're going to act based upon your attitude, your expectation, but you're going to act because of faith. Amen? And then number four, and this will be in closing. 
Number four is persistence. Amen? Or diligence. I like to call it this way, the persistence of faith. Amen? Because every single one of these, faith is involved. Amen? Yeah. Every single one of these items that we talked about. 2 Peter 1, verse 5. Let me read it in the Amplified. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1, verse 5. And I'm going to read it in the Amplified. 2 Peter 1, verse 4. Verse, <laughs> help me there. 2 Peter 1, verse 5, in the Amplified, says, For this very reason, adding your diligence to the divine promises. Woo, you get that? Mm -hmm. Employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy, and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, and intelligence. Amen? Amen? We must have a persistent faith, never quit, never give up. The power or virtue will come through persistence. Did you hear that? The power or the virtue will come. That's why the woman with the issue of blood, she was persistent. She was diligent. I'm going to get through this crowd. I'm going to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 6 says that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. God is a rewarder of who? The people who will diligently seek Him. Amen? Yes. So we can see many different, different issues in people's lives in the Bible, but it was through persistence or that persistence in faith, amen, that they broke through. Hallelujah. Yes. Blind Bartimaeus, he was persistent. Amen? I mean, we talked about it a little earlier in the message. But what about the Canaanite woman with the demon-possessed child, the daughter? Bro, remember, she was persistent. Yes. Verse 23, the disciples said, send her away. She's bothering us. Jesus stayed quiet. You know what's amazing? Jesus stayed quiet, but she kept on. Jesus even, this is the woman Jesus called her. Called her a dog, basically called her a dog. Amen? The disciple. Send her away. She's leaving us alone. Jesus, just stay quiet. But it was through her persistence. It was through her persistence. Even the dog eat the crumbs of the master's table. She was persistent. She said, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to get my miracle. My baby needs a miracle. Amen? My child needs a miracle. And you, yourself, you might be here this morning and you need a miracle. Amen? Hallelujah. You're on the pathway to miracles. Your attitude. Yes. Amen? Yes. Your attitude. Expectancy. Faith in action or act on it. Amen? And then as you're diligent and you have persistence. Amen? Be persistent about what you're, ex what you're expecting. Be persistent. Amen? Amen. Come on, what you're believing God for. Hallelujah. And you're going to break through. And you'll see the miracles in your life happen on a daily basis. Because the miracles of God are for a daily basis. Amen? They're not just for once a week. Or once a month. Or once a year. But they're for every single day of your life. And I believe you're going to break through even today. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray for you this morning. Hallelujah. And then you that are watching, I'm going to pray with you here in just a moment. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord God. That you're giving us keys to the pathway of miracles. And that we will begin to operate and function by faith. That we're going to get hungry for your word and the things of God. And as we do, Lord God, we will find the promises and come into a, a revelation that those promises are ours. But we're going to have to have a good attitude about it. We can't be thinking the way we used to think. We can't think out of our flesh. But we've got to be conscious of our spirit. And that faith would come alive in our hearts even this morning. Hallelujah. From hearing the word of God 
And we're going to have a great expectancy. We're going to believe you. And we're going to see mighty miracles. Miracles are the normal way of operation. It's normal business for the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we're going to see in our lives. That we're literally, the, the supernatural will become our natural. And we're going to walk in signs, wonders, and miracles. Every single person here. And every single person under the sound of my voice. It's not business as usual any longer. But we're going to begin to walk. You will begin to walk in the things of God as you're on the pathway of miracles. And as you operate based on these keys. And always by faith. You will see what you expect come into full manifestation. And everything God has called you to do. It shall be accomplished in and through your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Were you blessed this morning? Amen. I felt just needed to get into it and get really on miracles. Amen? Because amen. every one of us needs some miracles. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Yes. But you got to want them. Yes. So let me talk to you that are watching this morning. I want to tell you that God loves you and God has a wonderful plan for your life. And if you don't know if you're going to die this very second, that you would go to heaven you can know for sure. You know, the Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible also says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And you're a whosoever. So no matter, you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, today is a day of salvation. Don't hesitate. Don't wait any longer. You're not guaranteed another moment. What would happen if you breathe after your last breath? Where would you spend eternity? You don't have to spend it in a, in a devil's hell. But that you could spend it in heaven. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. But maybe you're backslidden. You've, you've gone out of God's will. You know that you're away from God. And you know if you die right now, you want to go to heaven. Because you walked away from him. You can come back to Jesus. You can fall in love with Jesus all over again. He will be your first love. And then maybe the devil's lying to you. Telling you're not saved. You're not born again. You're not going to heaven. Those lives will be broken off your life. So if you would like to receive the gift. It's a free gift of salvation. Then say this prayer. But believe it in your heart. You're going to confess with your mouth. But you're going to believe in your heart. Just say this prayer. Repeat it after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe you have risen from the dead and that one day you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am saved. I am born again. I am forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen, amen. And that is good news. As you prayed that prayer, your sins are forgiven you. You're a child of God and you're on your way to heaven. Always remember to run to God and not away from Him. Amen? Because He truly does love you and has a great plan for your life. Amen? amen. Wasn't that awesome, everybody? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Were you blessed this morning? Amen. Amen. We're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed. And then we're going to take communion together. Amen. So do what God tells you to do. If it's your tithe, if it's your offering. Amen. Building fund, you can write on there, building fund or BF or Jubilee, which is a four-month, three, four-month pledge, whatever you want to pledge. Amen. That you would do that. Be faithful to do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, obviously tied 10%. I mean, there's no question. But then it's that giving part. Amen. You know, even for you that are watching, you know, sometimes people don't understand this, but it's the tie then they give. Amen. So, I mean, they, God said, you robbed from me. They said, what do you mean, God? We, where do you mean we robbed from you? He said, in your tithes and offerings. 
Amen? So it's in the area of giving. Because that really reveals a lot of our heart. But there should be an expectation. So as you give today, you expect. Yes. There is no farmer. I mean, I have family that are farmers. I used to, to do a little farming. I never, ever planted anything without expecting it to grow. Amen? So as you plant seed this morning, you expect the harvest from that seed. And the awesome part is God always multiplies it. Amen? Isn't that awesome? God always multiplies it. Hallelujah. There is power in your seed this morning. So hold your seed in your hand. Amen. And we're going to pray over it and bless it. Thank you, Lord God, that you give seed to the sower. And as they sow this morning, if that's their point of contact. That's the point of where they'll release their faith. And once it leaves their hands, Lord, your word says it goes directly to your hands. And so there's a spiritual, a heavenly transaction being made this morning as we sow seed. And that every single person shall be blessed. And we thank you for it, Lord God. We thank you for multiplication, that there is power in the seed to multiply. It will not just bring back some little harvest, but that it will bring back a harvest that's multiplied, Lord God, that people will not be able to contain it, for they are blessed to be a blessing. And so they'll just be able to pour out and be a blessing, Lord God, but that this offering will be used for your kingdom to advance your kingdom and for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. It's blessed. You're blessed. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, pass the bucket. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hey, the right attitude. Amen. Isn't that the right attitude? Woo. Be thankful and grateful. So let's take communion now. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who enjoys taking communion? Yes. I mean, isn't it awesome? Yes. Like, when you take communion, don't you, I mean, don't you like sense just his anointing? I mean, his very presence? I, I do. I, I mean, it's one of the things I enjoy to do. The elements, amen. So take the bread. We're going to pray over the bread. Bless it, amen. Thank you, Jesus. And even as you took the bread and you broke it, you said, this is my body broken for you. And your body was broken for us. That sickness and disease is far from us because by your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. And that we can walk in perfect health because of your body. And we do this in remembrance, Lord, of what you did. And that comes with what you accomplished. So let it be accomplished in our lives. We receive it. We receive our miracle. We receive our healing. We receive health. We receive strength. We receive everything your body bought for us. Everything that your body did for us. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go ahead and take it. Hallelujah. Healing is the children's bread. Hallelujah. You know the woman who brought her child to Jesus. We just talked about it. Called her a dog. My goodness, you know, she said even the, she said that the dogs eat. But remember, he said, why would I give you the children's bread? That's what you don't understand. Healing is the children's bread. The miracle was because of that. You see how that works. Amen? Hallelujah. Now as you take the cup, it represents the blood of Jesus. Amen? Let's pray over it. Thank you, Lord, for your blood that you poured out. It was not spilt. It was not by accident, but that you gave your life and you poured out your blood on purpose, with purpose, that we are washed and cleansed by the blood. Every bit of guilt, shame, sin, every mistake is under the blood and it's no more. Because not only do you forgive us, but you forget. Why? Because there's no record of it. There's no trace of it. And we thank you that we are redeemed because of the blood. We are washed because of the blood. Woo! Hallelujah. Whew, just let that just, huh. Just sense your presence this morning, even now. Hallelujah. There's no trace of anything. 
anymore in your life because of the blood. You're ransomed with the high price. It was the price of the blood. Priceless. Nothing can compare to it. That's why you're precious because the blood is precious. Amen. But also the blood protects. And we thank you for your divine protection because of the blood. As we're marked by the blood and the blood speaks for us. In Jesus' name we receive it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood. The blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we love you. Amen. Amen. <coughs> we love you. God loves you. Hallelujah. Thank you for everyone that's watching. Keep watching. Make sure that you subscribe. And we'll see you next time.